Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're repairing a pepper mill. Well, a little while back, I received a text message from my daughter asking, Hey, Dad, can you fix this? And she sent me pictures of her pepper mill. And at first I was thinking, well, you know what? I could fix a pepper mill. How bad could it be? And then the pictures arrived. <laughs> well, you guys already know that I'm not one to just take something that got broken like this. Uh, this happened when it got dropped. But I'm not just one to take it and throw it in the trash. I have to at least attempt a repair. And that's what we're going to do today. We're just going to play around with it. I don't know how the results are going to be, but we're going to try to repair this pepper mill and see how we make out. And I'll take you along for the journey. So first things first, let's head over to the bench and see how badly this thing is damaged. Well, being clear plastic and being dropped and shattered, um, the bottom of this here, even if we glued this back together, I think it would look like a dog's breakfast. I think it would just be horrible. Those cracks would always show. It would never look right. Um, but on top of that, there's pieces missing. So gluing this back together is not an option. As well, these balls that go on top, I'm not even sure which is which. I'm going to have to play with them and, and see which one goes on which side. But either way, one of these balls go on each side to form a certain figure's head. And they'll glue on like that. But of course, they broke when this thing fell. So that's what we're going to start off with because they're intact. So the first thing I want to do is I want to take this, uh, the grinding mechanism here or the, the actuator here off of the top of the pepper mill. I'm going to remove this gasket. And this is what we want to repair first. So what I'm going to do, or this is what I'm thinking, is we're going to use two-part epoxy for starters, but we want to be very careful to make a clean joint on this. And we need something that's going to be strong. So the first thing I want to do, well, you know what? I want to take this over to the drill. Well, over at the drill press, uh, at a very low speed in both of these broken off pieces, I drilled a 532nd diameter hole. Um, now that may seem very specific to you, but the reason I drilled a hole that is 530 seconds is because I want to fit a 1 8 dowel in here very loosely um, to give us some wiggle room to be able to strengthen these when I glue these on with the epoxy. What I want to do is basically half fill these holes with epoxy, put this dowel in here and have it solidify and then be able to glue around the broken section and then connect it on to our, we'll call it the head here. But we can't do that without a mating hole here in our top piece. Um, so what we're going to do is I tried to drill as close to the center of the break as I possibly could and I'm going to duplicate those holes now in the mating breaks that are on this head of the pepper mill. So seeing the inside of this, it's not completely hollow. So I don't need a really deep hole. I think I'm only going to go in here maybe about a quarter of an inch. Just something to help uh, solidify and strengthen this glue joint. So for this, I'm going to do it with a hand drill um, at a very low speed. This is plastic. You don't want to melt the head of this. So just take it slow. Okay, so the walls of that are thinner than what I had anticipated. They're only about an eighth of an inch thick. But they do go into a hollow area, so we'll still be able to get some epoxy in there and we'll still be able to hopefully strengthen that glue joint. So let's get this other one drilled on the opposite side and see how we make out. So I have cut some small pieces of 1 8 dowel and they will go in here. And although it's not much of a nub, that's actually going to stick here into uh, the head of our pepper mill. 
I think it will go a long way to giving that just a little bit of extra strength. So <clears throat> what we're going to do now is mix up our epoxy and glue these ears in place. Well, here is my epoxy and you can see right here the line of the epoxy level inside these jars. Um, this stuff has gone thick. So some people would say this is junk now, but I've shown you guys this little trick on one of my tip shows before and I'm going to show you how well it works now on this show. So for what we need to make this usable again is we just need a little bit of hot water. So this water doesn't have to be scorching hot. This is uh, water that is just, you know, as hot as the hot water tap will allow. And we're just going to sit our bottles like that in the hot water, let them sit for anywhere from three to five minutes. And after a very short period of time, just drip the water off of that, this should be back to its normal viscosity. Look at that, right back to liquid. So that's spectacular. So there is, uh, if you guys had not seen that tip show, there's a little tip for you that if your epoxy hardens or thickens, I should say, um, you can rejuvenate it with hot water. So I'm going to glue these ears on one at a time. And while that will use a little extra epoxy um, and make it so that I'll have to mix a second batch, it'll also make it for a better glue joint because I won't be messing around trying to you know, hold both ears in place and that sort of thing. So I'm gonna mix this up. And what you really want to have on hand is some rubbing alcohol, and this is to clean up any squeeze out. And you'll also want some cotton swabs to be able to, uh, to use that to clean up the squeeze out. So let's start with the first ear and get it glued on. You want to make sure that you get plenty of epoxy in the holes that you drilled and that those dowels are going to be very securely seated, uh, almost buried in epoxy. All right, so we have that held on there and we'll just get some of our rubbing alcohol and a cotton swab and clean up quickly because this is five minute epoxy after all. Clean up any squeeze out that you have along the edges of your glue joint. All right, and now I'm just gonna hold this here now and let this set up. Okay, and with that first ear glued in place, I'm going to mix up a second batch of epoxy and we will do the exact same thing with our second ear. And once you get the second one glued on, just put it aside and let it dry. And then we can move on to trying to do something with this base. Well, the next thing I want to deal with here is this broken base or the reservoir for um, our peppercorns. And I think the only way really that I can do anything with this is to actually turn a new base to go on here but I don't have much to glue it to due to the fact that this busted lip here is preventing me from, say, cementing it to our um, ceramic mechanism here. So I think the first thing I want to do is I'm gonna take this over to the bandsaw and very carefully, I am going to trim off all of this section here that didn't break off. So you want just want to be very, very careful with this and cut off that bottom lip. Now one thing you want to be cautious of if you are trimming a round object like this is that it's very easy for the bandsaw to grab it and spin it down into the blade. So you want to make sure you have a very good grip. Normally I would clamp this, um, but it's physically impossible to clamp it due to the fact that it's plastic. I'll probably break it. So we're just going to trim up any of these uh, broken areas or melted areas here. I'm going to trim, the, trim this up and clean it up as best as I can. And then what we're going to need is a little block of walnut. 
Well, I have a blank of walnut here. I've cut it down to two and a half by two and a half, and it's one and an eighth inch thick. I have marked and center punched the dead center of this blank. Now, the first thing that I want to do now that I have this base trimmed up and cleaned up is I want to measure the size of the actual ceramic piece itself. And in this case, this one is one and a half inches. So that's where we're going to start by drilling um, a one and a half inch diameter Forstner bit hole approximately halfway down through this blank. Now guys, with a drill bit this size, do not try to hold the blank by your hands. Get it into a hand screw clamp and hold it securely in place using the hand screw clamp. It's a much safer operation. And at this point now, right in the middle of where we just drilled, I'm going to drill a one inch through hole. And if you're wondering what the one inch through hole is for, that is for a collet so that we can mount this to our lathe. And with this blank mounted up the way that I like, I'm just gonna turn this to round. Well, with our piece rough turned, what I want to do now is I want to insert our ceramic mechanism here into our hole. You know what, that's a, just a little tight. Um, almost too tight there. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to enlarge this hole ever so slightly just to make this a better fit. All right, that fits a little better. And what I want to do now is I want to mark the outside edge of our pepper mill at its widest point right there. And we will place a mark there and we want them to place or to turn kind of a divot at that point. And we want that divot to be deep enough to cover our worst damage on this lower section of our pepper mill. Okay, and once I'm happy with that, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to take this out of the lathe we're going to reverse it on the collet and we're going to start working on turning the bottom. Um, so let me get this reversed and I'll show you what we want to do for that. Now we know that on the opposite side we have an inch and a half hole that is about halfway through. So I've marked that hole here so that we don't cut into it. If we cut into that hole we're going to lose our mounting here. So what I want to do is with my parting tool, about an eighth of an inch in from the edge, I just want to cut um, a groove there. It doesn't have to be deep, maybe about a quarter of an inch in depth total. So I can actually cross over this line because I know that I'll still have material there to work with. So let me get that groove cut and then um, from there, we just need to sand it up, but I'll show you what I end up with after I cut that groove. And that is roughly what I'm looking at there. So at this point in time, we can give the whole thing a really good sanding, um, making sure that you take off any of the sharp edges, make sure it looks good. Uh, you can even apply a CA finish if you want. The choice is yours at this point in time, but let's get this sanded up and then we can move on to what I hope will be one of the final steps. Well, this is what you end up with now. We have our base, this is the bottom, and this is our top. Our pepper mill will sit right in here on this ring, and this ring here is where our grinding mechanism will go. However, it's not gonna fit in here, not even for a second, because it gets in the way. Um, it can't sit flush. So this is what we're going to do. And like I said, this is where the magic kind of happens. This ring right here, right where we enlarge that hole to make the um, grinding mechanism fit better, we're going to take this over to the scroll saw. We're going to use, or we're going to treat this rather as an interior cut. We're going to put our blade right through this one inch hole and using the edge of this hole here, we're going to cut this entire ring out of the center of our turning. And once you get the core cut out of it, 
and take it over to the oscillating drum just to clean up the inside and even it out a bit. You can give these edges a sanding and then the pepper mill itself will sit right in there like that. Now it sits a little crooked, but that is because where I cut this ring here, where I cut off the broken section, it's not square to the body. So I think I'm gonna get in here and carefully file off some of these uneven edges until I get it so that it sits properly in our new base. And once I'm happy with how it sits in the new base, well then we need to mix up a little more epoxy. So before I glue this in, I just put a finish on it. It was just a few coats of shellac and then uh, I buffed it up on the wheel, you know, with some carnauba wax just to give it a nice little sealed finish. And we're just going to mix up some five minute epoxy here um, and glue our chamber to our wooden base. Now guys, if you have any squeeze out at all, now is the time to get it with your cotton swabs and your rubbing alcohol. Because if it shows along here the base, the squeeze out of that uh, epoxy, it will really be an ugly eyesore on there. So just make sure that you have no squeeze out. This looks really good. I don't see any squeeze out at all. So. I'm going to let that sit now and let it cure. And uh, the last thing to do, I guess, after that is just to put the whole thing back together. All right, and there you go. Good as new. I don't know what you guys think, but I think that looks great. And there you have it. A pepper mill repair. Guys, what is the point of today's show? I mean, unless you have this exact pepper mill, pretty much nothing I've done here relates to anything out there. But the point of this is not repairing this pepper mill. What the point is, is that we live in a disposable society. Um, we live in a society where people buy cheap things on the basis that, ah, well, you know what, it lasted a year, I'll just go out and buy a new one. And you know what, it drives me absolutely crazy. Gone are the days of taking your shoes out to get resold at the cobbler. Gone are the days of having your quality furniture reupholstered. Gone are the days of sending in one of your electronics to be fixed so that you could get more use out of it for years down the road without having to purchase a new one and dump the old one in the landfill. Gone are the days of repair, it seems. And I mean, why? What did it take? This pepper mill, I don't know what it cost originally, but considering how it's branded, I'm gonna say it was probably 20 bucks. 20 bucks. So it got dropped and it shattered and you throw it in the garbage for what? To go out and spend another $20 to buy a new one. But yet with a scrap of walnut, a couple pieces of 1 8 inch dowel and a little bit of two part epoxy, I fixed this thing for probably about 25 cents. And I honestly think that it looks better than the original. I love that walnut base. Now the key with this whole project was not to over engineer it and I got to admit sometimes I have a problem with that that I over engineer my projects and they end up big and bulky so I had to really pull back on this one to not over engineer it because you want this to be light you don't want a really bottom heavy uh, pepper mill you, you want this thing to look like it was made this way and that it's not an add on. And it really took some control on my part to get those walls thin and to keep that piece of walnut um, as light as I possibly could. And I think, now this is just my opinion, but I honestly think that it looks like it belongs. If you saw this, say, on a shelf in a store, you wouldn't think it was ever repaired. If you saw this in somebody else's home, you wouldn't think that it was a repair job. You would think it came like that. And the only way that you would know the difference is if you had one of the originals to compare it to. 
Either way, guys, it was a load of fun, a great way to reuse something that was destined for the garbage. My daughter said it'll probably look like crap, you know, if I try to repair it anyway, but I don't know. It all depends on if you want to think outside the box and use methods that, you know, like don't try to glue it back together. It was missing pieces. So we modified it to make it better. So we went from this unusable trash to, to this. And honestly, guys, I think it looks great. Guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week. I, I hope that you've enjoyed today's content. Um, I mean, we really need to get away from this disposable society attitude and start putting some effort into repairing the things that we own. There are far too many people out there that will just buy something, break it, buy a new one, buy a new one, buy a new one, buy a new one, and then cry the blues that they have no money. Well, what did you expect when you scrapped everything that you had and just kept spending more cash? But either way, guys, it's a lot of fun. If you haven't already, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. You click that bell and then you're not going to miss, well, future repairs. <laughs> I want to thank you so much for tuning in this week, guys. I hope you've enjoyed the content. I hope you've found it useful. I hope that it's inspired you to maybe repair that thing in your house that you've been looking at thinking, gee, I should get a new one of those. Hopefully it's inspired you to repair that or try to repair it first at least. And more importantly, guys, I hope that you're going to join me again next week when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays.